What happened as you read your Bible for the first time and you read the devastating news of King David's fall into adultery? You saw the one who slew Goliath being slain by the giant of lust. How did that affect you? Now, since Paul tells us that the Old Testament scriptures were written for our instruction, what can we learn from this? Especially since so many people email in desiring counsel and help in the area of sexual purity. You need to understand this. Your fall into lust or any sin may have been caused by a more subtle sin that led to a more major and outward fall. There may be conduct in your life, like wasting your time, that you're not as convicted and ashamed of as you should be. Thus, you continue in that conduct, and it leaves a door open into other areas of sin. When people complain about their struggles, they often neglect to identify the underlying cause of their problems. What's at the root of it? Yes, we are shocked by David's adultery, but is there something else we should be shocked by that knocked down the first domino and it eventually led to the greater sin? In 2 Samuel 11, the inspired author specifically points out that the occasion for David's fall came about at a time when he should have been at war. The customs of that day had the kings going to war, but the text says David remained. He didn't go. Now, don't pass over that statement. Because simply put, David would not have fallen into adultery if he would have gone with the army instead of remaining. So David's misuse of time led to his subsequent sins and led to adultery. David first gave in to the temptation of not going to war when he should have. That's a starting point, at least what we can tell. And this put himself in a vulnerable situation. Taking a nap on the couch is not sinful in and of itself, but the timing here is sinful. It wasn't time for a nap. It was wartime. And rather than lay on a couch, he should have been on the field. And the act of failing to do the right thing when we know we should do it, according to James 4.17, it's sin. David sinned by not going. There he is taking a nap, arising, and seeing and lusting after a woman. Well, this then makes us ask this question. What led to King David's bad use of his time? Now, I can only speculate, but it's interesting. In chapter 10, verse 19, it says they had a victory and the Syrians would no longer support the Ammonites. And what this means is that the next battle that David was going to be a part of, it'd just be a sure victory, a wipeout, since the enemy had no more support any longer. And it was a wipeout. So David could sit this one out, right? I mean, he's no longer needed. He paid his dues. He could retire from warfare easily, right? I mean, the custom was kings go to war, but, you know, it no longer applies if for certain we're going to win the battle, right? Oh, no, no. As John Trapp rightly said, while Joab is busy laying siege to Rabbah, Satan was laying siege to David. And Satan won before Joab won. Therefore, David may have remained because of pride. It's a possibility. Uh, knowing victory was certain, he ignored a custom that he thought was not applicable to him. He, he pushed it to the side. And is that not often the case with us? Our pride, our high view of ourselves, it leads us to misuse our time, and we think it will have no severe consequences. It's not that big of a deal. Well, look at David. He committed adultery. They set up the woman's husband to die in battle. Then the child that Bathsheba had died. And then he was publicly exposed. And it's all been recorded for us to even know about it to this day. Pride in the misuse of his time led to all of that. Is that a big deal? Absolutely it's a big deal. And yes, in, in some of the public cases of famous preachers that maybe you've known who've fallen, if you dig to the root of it, you might find something very similar. As King Uzziah uh, grew famous, 2 Chronicles records that he also grew proud. He grew famous and he grew proud. And then you see 81 men of valor. They come to rebuke this man. And, and what was his response? And in short, it was, don't you know who I am? He was now untouchable. Christian, at a time when you should be going to bed, let's say, not to war, but to bed, to get up, to read your word, or are you just sitting there scrolling on your phone? Or 
from a smartphone, you know, you can spot someone a lot easier than David from a roof. Oh, it's a whole lot more accessible. It's a whole lot more right in your face, all the temptations. Uh, well, maybe it's when you should be at church or at a prayer meeting. You remain at home. What's the reason? What Do you have a good reason or is it just a lame excuse? And then how do you use your time now that you've not gone to war, not gone to pray? Uh, what if you fell into sin that day or temptation was more real to you? You, you see what I'm saying? Can you not see that what came prior to some sort of fall was often a misuse of your time. With David, this is not a new convert falling into sin. This is a man who conquered Goliath, who was leading the kingdom. He was relying on God's power, and now he faces this giant, the giant of lust. And he seems to have lost the discipline and the zeal that he had as a shepherd boy. How often men have grieved the Lord after a season of true zeal because they put their guard down. Satan will try to tempt you, but if you live out the sent mission of God in your life and you seek first his kingdom, it's going to be very difficult to indulge. I mean, what I'm trying to say is this, you got to keep on the advance of going forward in obedience to Christ. You're out at war, you're on the battlefield, spiritually speaking, engaged in advancing the gospel, using your time for the things of the Lord. It's going to be a lot harder to go fall into some sort of sin when you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, you know, the scriptures, they talk about us not just fleeing temptation, but pursuing righteousness. It's not just about the negative, what not to do, but the positive, what to do, to seek first his kingdom. So, do you pursue righteousness? You know, several young people told me about their struggles with lust. But when you dig deeper, you find that often their struggle, it's starting not with lust at all but with laziness and wasting their time in other areas of their life. And this wasting of time is the root in this giving in to selfish desires and wasting their time that leads to more outward sin. Let me give you an example of how sensitive that we should be as Christians to the use of our time. Uh, D.E. Host of China Inland Mission. Males were few and far between, and sometimes weeks passed without any arriving. One day after such a period, a male arrived, and his first impulse was, of course, to sit down and read his letters. He was arrested by the thought, however, that had he been still in the army, he would not thus have allowed the personal to take first place. Why should he be more lax in serving as a missionary? Resolutely putting away his letters until lunchtime, he resumed his study. You see, that's the type of self-control that you and I need in our lives, especially in 2023 in a digital media age. But you know what? Selfishness, it causes you to uh, be distracted from the mission and the spiritual warfare. And it's, it's not an accident that in Titus 2.6, Paul charges the younger men. He urges them to be self-controlled. Uh, that's the one thing he says. So do you have the discipline to refrain from reading a message in order to finish a task like host? If not, that lack of self-control, you might think that's small, but it's going to carry over into other areas of your life. You see, the misuse of time, the lack of discipline, it just is, it's the domino that affects these other areas. So is sexual purity an issue in your life? Look at it this way. Maybe your real issue is the misuse of time. And maybe the root of the misuse of your time is your own pride and selfishness. Not being where you should be might far more be the real struggle in your life. And that struggle may be present because of pride and an inflated view of self, where you don't recognize your absolute need to cast yourself upon the Lord for power and strength. You, you might be a procrastinator and you just keep putting off what you know you should do. Think about it. Every sin you've ever committed, every time you grieved the Holy Spirit, it took place in time. And how were you using your time leading up to that moment? How was I using my time? Just as David could have said, if I would have been out with the army, I would not have fallen. Well, what about you? Uh, don't fall into a situation where you say, well, if I would have been doing this, I wouldn't have fallen into that. Rather, go be where you know God wants you to be. Lastly, we've got to be reminded in all of this of God's supreme mercy in David's situation. The Lord didn't leave David in his sin. Psalm 32, it says God's hand was heavy upon him. 
And the Lord disciplined David. And God sent Nathan the prophet to expose and rebuke David. What Hebrews 12 says is true. God disciplines every son whom he receives. And David was not left without discipline. David acknowledged his sin and he found forgiveness. You see, the gospel's good news. You want to use your time well? Submit every calendar day, every week to Christ. Every week belongs to him. The Son of God, he took upon himself humanity and he lived the perfect life and he never misused one second of his life. And he was found there on the cross. He wasn't somewhere else. He went to battle. And there he was hanging there, bearing the full weight of the wrath of God that the sinner deserves in hell for all of an eternity. He paid the price to secure your release, to give you a full pardon. And not only that, but the Father sent the Holy Spirit to regenerate men from the dead and make them new creatures. What must you do to be saved? Believe in Jesus Christ. Trust in Him alone. So may the Lord help us to use our time because a failure that is so much at the root of various sins and provisions for temptations in our lives is this very thing, misuse of your time. So your real battle, it might not be, well, I struggle with lust. It might be you struggle with wasting your time. And that is leading to all the lust in your life. God help us.